Hello, I want to talk about the Motorola One 5G phone. I saw that this phone went on sale from its normal price of $444.99 down to $299.99. And I was looking at some YouTube reviews and Amazon reviews, trying to figure out if I wanted to buy this phone. And I found that there was certain information lacking, some questions I didn't seem to be able to find answers for on the internet. So I thought I would make this little review uh, for anyone who was looking for a little more information. One of the things I think you should keep in mind with this phone is that I believe it was released in August of 2020 and at that time at basically $450 uh, everybody who reviewed it was reviewing it sort of you know in lieu of its price um, and the competition that would have been around at that price so, for example, CNET here uh, says it's far from perfect, but it's the best, most affordable 5G phone in the U.S. right now. But I wonder what they would have said if this phone had been $300 instead of uh, $450. They say it was an affordable price, um, but, uh, you know, and they say uh, poor photo and video quality and low light, and, and I'm sure that's true compared to you know, phones from, from Google, Apple, Samsung, and other phones that are in its uh, price category. But w how would it do against other $300 phones? Uh, so let me take a look here. Here's another one, uh, Moto One 5G review, killer battery life, lackluster cameras. Uh, okay, so... Yeah, I think that this phone would have been a hit if it had been released at $350 to $400 and if it was unlocked instead of just being available on AT&T and Verizon. Uh, they could have sold a lot of them. And at $300, it seems like they could sell a lot of them. For me, I'm not an AT&T or Verizon uh, customer. I, I use Cricket, which is apparently a subsidiary of of AT&T so I can use the AT&T towers but I'm paying the Cricket prices so I pay $99 a month for four smartphones and I was looking for a phone that was not gonna cost too much but but give me a lot of bang for the buck and I think this one this one does uh, I love the Moto Shake flashlight I love the twist camera uh, I love the Moto lock screen display uh, these aren't you know, huge things, but the longer that I own Motorola phones, the more that I like these features. I really don't want to give them up if I were to switch to some other kind. And I appreciate being able to use my micro SD memory chips. I wish Google's phones um, could have more features like this. <clears throat> so one of the big questions I had was, would this phone work on, um, on, uh, on Cricket? And I am using Cricket Night right now, the 4G services that they offer. I'm not using the 5G services. And I don't really want to pay for the 5G services. I don't really need them. I'm, I'm happy with the 4G. So all I did, I, I used to use a Motorola G7 phone, which was a 4G phone. So all I did was I just took the SIM card out of my Moto G7, put it into the Moto One 5G, and it worked. I was able to immediately uh, make phone calls and send texts. But the weird thing was, I was not able to um, receive texts for a while. I want to say it was like 30 to 45 minutes or something after I put the SIM card in. It wasn't receiving texts. I'm not sure what if what exactly caused that or, or how you would change that, but... Um, Anyway, for anybody out there wondering, does this phone uh, work on um, Cricket? Well, it seems to to work for me. Um, like I say, I'm I'm on the 5G or the 4G version. I haven't tested the download speeds, but so far it just seems to be working normally. Um, I can now call people and receive calls. I can send and receive texts. Um, let me see here. So let's see. The next thing I wanted to talk about was that Wi-Fi calling does not seem to work. 
and I'm getting these notifications that say Wi-Fi calling, um, talk and text over Wi-Fi when cellular coverage is limited or unavailable. And if I try to look into that, I I get this. If I if I actually click on uh, whatever it is that in the settings that would bring me to this. It brings me to this screen that says Wi-Fi calling error identified. Oops, this wasn't supposed to happen. Please try again. And if the error continues, please contact us at 611. You know, I've been told that Wi-Fi calling only works on Cricket if you buy the phone from Cricket. And, the, you know, I'm not buying my phones from Cricket. I'm just buying phones and adding them to Cricket. So I'm not really expecting this to work. Um, so I'm probably going to go into the settings and, however, turn off notifications for this Wi-Fi calling. Just want to let you know I am seeing that. Um, other thing I wanted to talk about um, is the physical device. It's it's heavier and it's thicker than the Moto G7 that I was using. Um, that's this device here, and I'm trying to get it in front of the camera here. And it's it's quite a bit thicker. Um, it's it's uh, about an eighth of an inch uh, thicker from from uh, from the side. <sighs> um, but to be honest with you, I I like large phones, and I don't mind that this phone is uh, larger or heavier at all. It fits in my pockets just fine. Rear jeans pocket, yes, it might stick out a little bit. I don't care. Uh, it fits in my my uh, winter jacket. has a chest pocket. fits in there, too. And that's pretty much all I care about. I do th find that I kind of use it more with two hands, maybe, than I did with my old phone. But it doesn't bother me. I, I'm a pretty big guy, and I lift weights, and I'm not complaining about something weighing a few more ounces more. So I know there's a lot of people that that complain about big heavy phones but I use my phone for consuming media and I want to see a big screen and I want the battery to last more than five minutes so to me these are things totally uh, worth having so this phone has a touch sensor on the side and so you get these phone cases with a big chunk missing out of the side um, I actually really like this phone case and I'll get into that in a little bit um, but so yeah how are you gonna get to this button this fingerprint sensor unless you take a big chunk out of the side but you know what there's so much rubber plastic or whatever this is probably tpu um that i don't think that if i were to drop this i'd really have a problem with any damage um but i like this this sensor on the side when i grab the phone it just sort of seems like my finger just kind of like lands right there to be able to to unlock it and i felt like when we had um, some of my other phones that have had the, the sensors um, on the back, I felt like eh, trying to get lined up with it sometimes was a little more difficult. Um, and so I kind of like this side-mounted center sensor. It does have this, this double tap feature, or if you double tap it, it'll bring up a little menu customized with whatever you want. Um, I got my Bible, my Planet Fitness app, my... Uh, I don't know what else is in there. Um, my Google Photos, My Fitness Pal. These are apps that I use all the time and that I kind of need to jump into. When I need them, I need them right now. Um, and, you know, for example, if I'm, if I'm in my car and my phone's turned its screen off, you know, and I've got it on the magnetic mount, um, I kind of feel like trying to get my hand around this thing to, like, fiddle, fiddle around and find this sensor when it's, you know, up against the car is kind of a pain. So having... The sensor on the side is just so much more accessible, and I like that. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna like that. Um, yeah. So, um, I have a little technical difficulty here with my laptop. The screen just turned off. There we go. Coming back. Pardon the uh, unprofessional nature of my video. Okay, so um, this phone does have um, NFC. And I don't know what that is for. I know what it is, but I've never, I don't, you know, I've had a lot of Moto phones that didn't have NFC. 
And um, I don't know what I'm going to use that for. So, yeah, I might have to look into that. I guess I think you can use it for, like, uh, Google Pay or something. But I don't use that service. So I'm not really sure if I'm going to end up using it there at all. Um, so this phone also has the Snapdragon 765 processor, 765G processor, according to the Motorola website in it. And, uh, you know, my old phone, my Moto G7, had a Snapdragon 632 in it. And I went looking around online trying to figure out um, if that was going to be better or worse. And of course, you'd think a, a newer, a newer processor would work out better. Uh, what I was able to see online was things like this, where the 765G was, you know, way outscoring the 632. What does this mean? Of course, you know, a a, a seven series versus a six series processor. If it's like a year or two newer or whatever, of course, it's going to be better um, or supposed to be better. Um, I'm not an expert with any of these things, but everything I looked at, uh, it seemed like it was, it was going to be better. I, I tried to, you know, um, to look this up and be, you know, smart about it. Hey, here's what I was able to find kind of what you'd think you'd be able to find on this. Uh, let me go back to, um, some of the other things though. So, so as far as, you know, you're going to need a case for your phone. I went into Amazon and I'm typing in Motorola Moto One 5G, and I'm just like, Motorola, would you please, could you please figure out how to name these devices so that you've got something unique in every country, not 50 devices with almost the same name. I'm like, I, I seriously can't believe how dumb. And I like your phones, but your naming conventions are stupid. There shouldn't be a phone called the Moto One 5G and then another phone called the Moto One 5G Ace. Because if you're ever trying to look up the Moto One 5G, you're going to get in your search results everything for the Moto One 5G and everything for the Ace. Come on, seriously, there's so many words in the world. Pick a different word for every phone. Amen. Now, that said, you go on here and you try to look up a case for this phone and you see that there's Moto One 5G case and then right after that it says Moto One 5G UW. I have no idea what the difference between those two are, if anything. But apparently there are different versions um, of this phone around the world called different things. And so the case manufacturers have figured out it's the same body or relatively the same body, but the case is slightly different. So they've got to put all the names of phones that could potentially fit in here. So you look in my my search up here. I typed in Motorola, because that's a thing, Motorola One 5G case. And, you know, look what comes up. I get Moto One 5G UW, Moto One 5G, Moto One 5G Ace. This is a completely Ace is a completely different phone. That's not going to fit in the same case. And this is Motorola's fault for this dumb naming convention that they have. So please fix that. Um, but the thing I guess I'd want to let somebody know is I believe that there is another phone uh, in Europe or something called the Moto G 5G Plus, and I think it's got the same housing as the Motorola One 5G. And that's why you'll see some of these case um, designations that way. Okay, so as far as that goes, what case did I pick? I picked this case. I just wanted something basic and that was kind of cool looking and I really liked it. Um, I like this case. I'll tell you what, I like this case. Um, there is one thing that's funny about it. You'll see in this picture, there is a button on the left-hand side. And I think that might be for the European version that has a button there. My phone uh, does not have a button there, so that little button on the case pushes absolutely nothing. But I think in Europe they were saying that it's a dedicated Google Assistant button or some such thing, and one reviewer said it was annoying because it was always going off whenever they put it in their pocket. So I don't feel like I'm missing anything here, but I like the case. I think it's cool, 
and it's very it fits really well um i have bought some cases in the past where i get them on the phone and the designer of the case has not figured out the exact dimensions for the phone somehow they didn't get the memo right and so cutouts don't line up right and stuff doesn't fit right oh this one fits good enough um and uh it, it feels very solid i mean uh, you got a chunk of phone here with the case like this um so i do like this case i did um i did try taking one of those metal plates that you might want to stick on the back of your phone and um i i put it underneath the case to see if this would stick to my car's magnetic mount and one of the things i found was it did stick but because of the thickness of these ridges and everything um it's it doesn't feel like it's quite holding on as much as some of my other cases which weren't quite as thick uh, but i do think it would work i'm just going to get a, a larger square um steel plate to stick on here instead of this little round one um so you can do it, and I, I did do it, and I had it in there, and it, and it did stick on when I put it under the case. But, but yeah, I like this case. I think it seems like a good one. Uh, I would say links below, but I don't know if I'm going to do that or not. Maybe maybe links below if I'm not feeling super lazy with this review. Um, so one of the things I did discover was I made a, a phone mount for my phone, and I discovered that it is too small for this phone because this phone is literally like an eighth of an inch thicker than my old phone so now i have to make new arms for my f my phone holder and that that also applied i made these little uh phone holders and they were too small so i had to make a bigger version um and you, you probably can't see the difference here but like here is the the new one and and here's the old one uh, it's hard to see but um yeah it's significantly bigger so, you know, this is a big chunky phone and I had to make a little bit of an adjustment there. Um, why did I go to this page? Oh, yeah, because of Gcam. Let's talk about that. Um, well, I'll just start in the beginning here, I guess, with, I got it all written down here, software. So all my apps and my settings, you know, I'm, I'm a Google user and I had my old phone backed up to Google. So when I turned this phone on and logged in, downloaded all my apps, downloaded all my settings, everything worked pretty well. It went pretty fast, went pretty well. I was actually kind of painless, to be honest with you. Um, so both my Moto G7 and Moto One 5G both run Android 10. And I would say that the Moto One 5G runs noticeably faster and snappier. Uh, probably the processor, the graphics processor, and the 90 hertz refresh rate um, help a lot with that. They both have four gigs of RAM. Uh, but in general, it feels very snappy compared to the old phone. Uh, but I will say this, and uh, other reviewers have said this too, there was a lot of AT&T bloatware on this phone, and so I had to uninstall as much of it as I could and then disable the rest of it. Uh, just because I... I'm not an AT&T customer, so all that software is not doing anything for me, and I wanted to clean up my app drawer, so I got rid of it. Um, okay, so now I want to talk about that there were, this is just a little thing, but uh, when I went into my app drawer, there were two apps called Contacts, and there were two apps called Phone Apps. And uh, it took me a minute to figure out what was going on here. Well, when it backed up my my phone apps from my old phone, it brought a... I think it brought the stock Google contacts and the stock Google phone dialer down from my old phone. Well, this phone already had maybe a slightly customized version or something. And so now there's two of them. And the ones that came with the phone can't be disabled or uninstalled. The ones that were backed up from Google could be uninstalled. So I uninstalled both of those. I opened up both the contacts apps and both the phone apps. They basically look exactly the same, so I don't know if I'm really uh, missing anything there. Um, photo quality. Uh, I did take some pictures. Um, I didn't take a lot of pictures, but I took a few pictures um, with this thing here. Let me get to that here real quick. So, okay, this thing has a this 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 thing has a macro camera, right? Uh, the, with the ring flash, and so we we had to try that out. So we we took a picture of this 3D printed pug, 
And normally I cannot get my Moto G7 to zoom, not zoom, but if I were to put my Moto G7 phone this close to a 3D printed object, it would not be able to focus on it and take a picture of it. Um, I've tried it many times. And then on furthermore, there'd be no light. It'd be so dark because the phone would be so close that it would be um, uh, in shadow. So it having that ring flash, wow. I mean, I was pretty impressed uh, at how good of a picture this came out. You know, it's the five megapixel macro camera, so it's not a million megapixels, but hey, this is gonna work. I make a lot of small things and I need a camera that can, can get in there uh, and get some detail out of that. So I was pretty happy with this picture. Um, I got a video of my son uh, riding his, uh, his one wheel. And, you know, I was, uh, I was happy with the quality that we got here. I don't know if I was using the stock camera or the G camera, but I'll get into that in a, in a second here. Um, probably if you're watching this review, you know what I'm talking about. I don't know which, I was probably using the Google camera on this. I don't know which one it was, but you know, I, I had put the camera kind of really far away from us. I didn't really realize that until later. Um, and I leaned it against my gloves or something so we could get this picture. But yeah, I'm able to zoom in on this and get um, get enough picture out of this that I'm, I'm happy with what I got. I don't know if it's showing up good on your end, but it looks good where I'm at. Um, so let's go back over here and we'll talk about this. So if you've never heard of it, you can download an app called Gcam. It is the Google camera that you would normally get on a Pixel phone. And you can get this from various websites and sideload it into your Android phone. It's not gonna be on the Google Play Store because Google uh, is silly. And while it gives away Google Maps and Gmail to Apple users, it doesn't give Gcam to Android users. Hello? I feel like, yeah, I know they wanna have an exclusive feature just for Pixel phones, but it's Google, come on. This is a feature that everybody's just sideloading anyways. If they've got some junky camera, they want to get a little more out of it. Everybody's just sideloading it. You need to just put this in the Play Store and make it an Android feature and be done with it. Uh, and if you're not going to do it, well, the whole world's going to do it for you. And that's what's happening here on XDA Developers. They've got the uh, Gcam 7.4 that can run on the Moto G 5G+, Plus, also known as the Motorola One 5G. I downloaded this and put it into my phone and it works. Um, so if you go to these websites, you can download the, the APK side loaded into your phone and uh, you can have the, the Pixel thing. Here's the one I used on mine. And uh, you can get better pictures maybe than you would. I think the only thing that you might want to consider is just, you know, you've now got three cameras on the back of your phone and two on the front. So you have five cameras that you're going to use and the Google Pixel camera app is probably not going to be able to link itself up with all five of those cameras. So there's going to be times you're basically going to have two camera apps. Um, but I would say maybe just a general idea would be if you want to get just a, a standard picture, not a wide angle or a macro picture, and you want to, and especially if it's at nighttime and you want to get that nighttime Google processing, post-processing on that picture, then launch the Pixel, you know, the Gcam app. If you want to use your macro camera or maybe your wide angle camera, if, if the Gcam app doesn't support that, I don't know if it does or doesn't, then run your standard Moto camera app. That's that's what I'll say about that. Um, let me see, where did I leave off here? All right. Uh, I don't know if I got anything to say about that or that. We talked about this. All right. Here was something weird. When I turned on this um, this web page, I found that it was kind of showing the desktop version, and I could not read any of these menus. And I was like, "What in the world? Why? Why is this page rendering like this? I don't know." So I I went in and I was checking for updates on on Chrome. You know, does, does Chrome have any updates in the Play Store? And uh, I don't know if it downloaded one or not, but eventually it sort of figured it out. So you can see this phone on the right here is my new phone. The Motorola 5, 5G, and the one on the left is my um, my G7, and you can kind of get an idea of like how much more screen real estate you're getting out of this. Um, my son was pointing out that there was a little bit of a difference in the colors uh, between these two, and um, 
both of these phones are set to the saturated color setting. Um, so I'm just guessing we're going to, I don't know, uh, difference in screens or difference in GPU or whatever. Somehow the colors were not the same. Uh, my G7, it was a little more light blue, and this had a little more of a teal look to it. Uh, but if you just wanted to kind of get an idea for what the difference is between those aspect ratios, they're about the same width, but this one's, I mean, I'd say it's maybe a half an inch taller, something like that. And so here's just a couple different views that sort of show you how this ends up laying out um, when you when you compare them. Um, you're getting you're getting more text. You're getting more more screen real estate. And I think if you were going to do um, Two, uh, if you're going to like do a split screen where you had two apps up on the screen at a time, you probably get more out of this. Uh, that said, I feel like that there are times where, um, especially when I first turned the phone on, the text on my new phone was really small and I was having a hard time seeing it. So I found that I could go into the settings and I could go into the display and somewhere in the display settings, I ended up finding this display size thing and I moved it from... I think it was right here and I moved it over here to large and that was just a little bit better for me as far as being able to see uh, what I wanted to see. Um, so that's, uh, I think that's, that's about it. That's what I wanted to say for anybody out there who's wondering, can you get one of these for 300 bucks? Is it, you know, going to provide you any value? I think it will. I, I like this phone so far. I know that are there better phones out there? Yeah, um, maybe they'd be more expensive too. And um, would they, you know, would they do what you want them to do? I don't know. I, I think I'm going to be happy with this phone. I'm going to get a couple years out of it. And um, I've got it on Cricut. What will be the future as far as will I end up having this thing on, uh, you know, 5G at some point? Yeah, probably. But really, to be honest with you, it's it's working fine. This is the way it is right now. So there you go. Hopefully there was some value in there for you. I uh, hope you have a great day.